Today I got time, yes. Today I got time, yes. You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz what? Nigga, what's up? How gangster are you, cuz? Hey. I don't fuck with you, cuz you disrespecting me. What? I don't fuck with you, cuz you disrespecting me. I go hard, cuz. Hey, you guys. Hope you guys are doing good. Happy, what is this, Tuesday, child? This month is flying, honey. It's ready the 15th. Hope y'all are doing good. Thank y'all for joining me today. We have a lot to talk about, okay? First and foremost, put a teacup. If you have watched my documentary deep dive that I did on Static Major, who is one of my favorite songwriters slash producers, please put a teacup if you got a chance to watch it yesterday. I am so grateful for the feedback that I'm getting from people. So many young people are like, you know what? I didn't even know who Static was. I thought Timbaland did everything. You know, chow, chow, chow. Oh, I'm so happy I made the deep dive. It was hard. Let me keep it real. It was hard. This was like over a month worth of work. And it was even harder because Static was around the time when there was no social media. So I don't have a Twitter page to go look at and an Instagram and all that stuff. So I have to remember a lot of this shit from memory and even getting back in contact with friends from Louisville. That's how they say Louisville. <laughs> you know, even like talking to some of them. But I felt like his story needed to be told. And I'm really upset that I couldn't post it on YouTube. But literally, that's what was slowing down the process because I would get so far I said, okay, well, let me upload this onto YouTube and see what YouTube does and automatically strike copyright. And it got so bad, they were like copywriting the visuals. So like there was a part where I showed Pretty Ricky dancing. They weren't even singing. You couldn't hear anything. I was just showing them as B-roll footage and it blocked it worldwide. So at that point, it was frustrating me and it was like slowing down my creative juices. So I was like, fuck this shit. This is going to be on my private page for, you know, my members, my patrons and my discorders. So for everybody who's watched it, thank you so much. I'm glad that I was able to make so many people aware of Static Major because there's a lot of Static Majors out here in the industry. There's a lot of people behind the scenes who are writers and producers, beat makers, and they don't get the credit that they deserve. They don't get the shine that they deserve. And I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm doing the Lord's work, you know what I'm saying, by exposing and, and showing the real people behind a lot of these hits that we listen to. You know, Aaliyah's last album was damn near all done by Static, but most people don't know that. So, you know, I just, it felt really good. I'm so glad you guys liked it. Y'all like the hair? Yes, yes, yes. I'm in red today, like a burgundy. I'm glad y'all are feeling it. But um, I'm gonna do a green room tomorrow. Since everybody wants to talk about it and, you know, share their thoughts, like how we did on the other, you know, uh, documentaries I've made. So we're going to do a green room about six o'clock tomorrow on Static Major. So if you're a fan of Static Major, if you're a fan of his work, if you just find out who he was by watching my video, definitely make sure that you call in. I want to hear from people. So, yes, thank you guys so much. Yes, I'm on my Black Widow red hair stuff. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. So it's it's a lot going on. So, honey, I was minding my black business, and all of a sudden, I'm hearing that Mace has dropped a diss track on Diddy. Okay, we have posted a snippet on my Instagram page. I don't want to play any music, just for the fact that you know YouTube really be bugging. Um, but let me show y'all the post that we had on IG about Mace. Okay, it's muted. So we played a snippet of it for everybody. So let me just share my screen real quick, child. We're going to get into a lot of stuff today. I got a lot to say about this situation. Y'all know I'm a big fan of Mace and the bad boy era. So he dropped his, uh, you know, says Murder Mace is back, the Oracle 2. And, you know, he, he, he came through. It's a five-minute diss track, and Mace went hard. He really did. And I hope y'all are feeling this thumbnail. I want to be creative. The, the thumbnail made me laugh. So I was like, I'm, this is my thumbnail. I'm using this for this video. Um, so I, I, what I want to do is kind of break down a lot of stuff because I've been watching other people's commentary on it. Well, particularly The Breakfast Club. And um, I was really disappointed in Charlemagne. You know, and I get it. You know, maybe because they're with Revolt TV. They got to, you know, walk on eggshells. They can't say too much. They don't want to piss off, you know, Puffy. 
Diddy, a.k.a. Brother Love. Well, I ain't got no damn contract with them, and I'm going to keep it 100 over here, okay? Now, if you guys remember back in 2020, I was calling out Diddy. I've been calling him out for a while. Um, he was on his woke shit in 2020. Remember when he was like burning sage and had crystals and a Bible and mixing spirits? You know, just weird. And I would, and then remember he had turned like he looked like he was 30 years older and we had only been on quarantine 10 days. I said, look at this vampire agent. It ain't, it ain't even 10 days. His whole head was gray. And so, you know, I kind of went in on him. And then like later on, there was some type of Grammy award show. You know, only the top people in the industry were invited to. And at that point, you know, Diddy got up there. Oh, he gave a grand old speech. Oh, the Grammys doesn't care about black artists. Oh, the Grammys treating black people bad. I mean, top for a good five minutes, bitch. And so, you know, Emma was praising them. Good job, Diddy. Take up for the black artists, child. When May seen that shit, he was like, hold up. I got to pull your coattail, bruh. You're not being real. You want to cry about, you know, the white man and what the white man is doing to black artists. But what are you as a black man doing to people like me? I've been trying to buy back my publishing from you for a while and it's been crickets. And so when I did that video, I'm gonna show you all the clip of that video. So when I did that video, Mace watched it and Mace ended up DMing me. So shout out Mace, check your DMs because I just sent you a message. I'm proud of the new song. So he ended up DMing me and he was just like, you know, thank you so much for the video. And you know, he's, he's a tea sipper. He supports black media. And um, I was shocked because I'm a, I'm a huge Mace fan, you know, from this is like my era, my high school, junior high days. And so I was just like so happy. Like, I'm, you know, I didn't know that you would even see my video. And, um, you know, I just had to keep it real in there. And this is what I've been saying for years. Like, yes, we respect Diddy for some of the stuff that he's done. But the way he's treated his artists is no different than what a lot of these white labels have done to black artists. Now that you're in a position to change that, you haven't done it. So we're going to go ahead and do a flashback on this live stream, honey, because I'm not going to repeat everything I said in that uh, video. Let me go ahead and share my screen with y'all. We're going to watch this. This is TT in 2020. We were all locked down. Memories. Memories. <laughs> and, and I changed my name, to, my middle name to Love. So it's Sean Love Combs now. Yeah, I didn't, you have to call me a different name. It's an added on name if you want to call me Love. So I say this with love to the Grammys. Um, you really need to know this. Every year, y'all be killing us, man. And I'm talking about the pain. I'm speaking for all the artists here, the producers, the executives. The amount of time that it takes to make these records, to pour your heart out into it. If you just want to eat and play and feel it. And the great words of Eric Badu, we are artists, and we are sensitive about our shit. We are passionate. For most of us, this is all we got. This is our only hope. Truth be told, hip hop has never been respected by the Grammys. Black music has never been respected by the Grammys to the point that it should be. So, so right now in this current situation, it is not a revelation. This thing been going on. And it's not just going on in music, it's going on in film, it's going on in sports, it's going on around the world. And for years, we've allowed institutions that have never had our best interests at heart to judge us. And that stops right now. You understand? Right. And we're here together, and, and we're going to keep staying together. We're getting tighter. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and united, we stand. And ain't nothing else. To us, right here. And so we had like a really good discussion on Instagram. And one of the things that I said on Instagram five days ago, I said, yes, he's speaking the truth. But why has it taken so long to get up and take a stance? Everyone has been cool sitting at the Grammy tables for years because as long as they won one, it didn't matter about the rest. 
It's so cool to be woke in 2020. So now folks want to see change. Had folks boycotted and taken a stand in the late 90s and early 2000s, like Will Smith, Salt and Pepper, and other rappers took back in the 80s to force the Grammys to include hip hop in its category, there'd have been way more inclusivity at the Grammy Awards. You are right. These same folks mad at the Grammys don't support their own shows. I caught this out a few years ago when Omarion was crying about not getting a Grammy Award for Post to be but didn't show up to the Soul Train Awards when he was being honored and uplifted. Monique has also spoken about this as well during Oscar So White. Sadly, some believe the white man's ice is colder. So that's what I was saying a few days ago. So like I said, you know, while a lot of people were praising Diddy, other people were definitely in the comments calling him out and saying, okay, but you know, look how he treats his artists. You know, he's one to talk. And, you know, it's funny that all these celebrities are so woke now in 2020. When I tell you, May said, today I got time, because... Yeah, I got time, because... Hey, you wasn't doing that, yeah, I was acting cool, because... You know, what's up, I can't destroy you, because... I don't fuck with you, because you disrespecting me. I don't fuck with you, because you disrespecting me. I go hard, because... He had time today, and he was not playing with Diddy, okay? I miss has come out of the woodwork and he's come out swinging and he's putting everything out there and just kudos to that brother for just telling the truth for telling his story Mace played an intricate part in helping bad boy rise to the success that they got after biggie smalls untimely death mace definitely put in work for bad boy and there's no reason that Mace is not on the same level as a P. Diddy, especially being that he was the rapper. It was his blood, sweat, and tears that really made that label what it was. So this is what Mace had to say. So Mace um, basically posted a picture that Meek Mill, who we see, you know, is really cool with Diddy and Jay-Z and stuff. Meek Mill posted this tweet and it says, what's up with all these different race men got all these young black kids in, in slave contracts in the music business. Come get with us. You need help fixing your situation. Hashtag DC times Rock Nation. It's literally still it now. We found something we can get rich off of. So that is what Meek had written. So Mace decided to reply to that. And this is what Mace is saying. Mace says, at Diddy, I heard your Grammy speech about how you are now for the artist and about how the artist must take back control. So I will be the first to take that initiative. Also, before we ask of other ethnicities to do us right, we should do us as Black people better, especially the creators. I heard you loud and clear when you said that you are not for artists, and to that my response is, if you want to see change, you make the change today by starting with yourself. Your past business practices normally has continued and purposely starved your artists and been extremely unfair to the same artists that helped you obtain that icon award on that iconic bad boy label. For example, you still have my publishing from 24 years ago in which you gave me 20K, which makes me never want to work with you as any artist wouldn't after knowing someone is robbing you and tarnishing your name when you don't want to comply with his horrendous business model. However, people would always ask, what's up with Mace? So I'd be forced to still perform to not look crazy when getting peanuts and the robbery continues. So many great moments in people's lives were lost. But again, I rode with you in the face of death without flinching and you still wouldn't do right. I never said anything because I wanted to wait until I was financially great so I can ensure that I was addressing this from a pure place and not out of spite. To add insult, you keep screaming black excellence and love, but I know love isn't free. So I offered you two million in cash just a few days ago to sell me back my publishing as his biggest artist alive. That also showed you respect for you giving me an opportunity at 19 years old. Your response was if I can match what the European guy offered him, that would be the only way I can get it back or else I can wait until I'm 50 years old and it would revert back to me from when I was 19 years old. You brought it for about 20K and I offered you 2 million in cash. This is not black excellence at all. When our own race is enslaving us, if it's about us owning, it can't be about us owning each other. No more hiding behind love. You change, give the artists back their money so they can take care of their families. So you guys all right let me let me hold on say. let me come back and this on this entire screen. situation Oops. is just really sad hold sad on. but he's telling the truth okay let me come back on the screen sorry it was so long i was not going to repeat everything i said two years ago and and read mace's thing but this is where the drama stemmed from so i just didn't respect 
how the Breakfast Club try to, you know, minimize it. Like, oh, he used auto tune. May she don't need auto tune. Like, shut up, Charlemagne. That's all you got from his rap song, you weirdo. Who cares if he used auto tune in certain parts? Did you listen to the lyrics? Did you hear the words that were coming out of Mace's mouth? You know, that's the part that's just so frustrating when people just try to diminish, you know, what somebody's saying and, and, and pick out just a stupid nuance. It had nothing to do with, the, with the, what he was saying. So you got to listen to the full track. I believe that why Mace has gone to this level of doing a diss track against Diddy is because, as we all know, Freddie P came out literally breaking down on camera crying I did that video the other day. And matter of fact, Babs sent me a DM. Babs Bunny. I was like, what? I was like fangirling because I didn't even think she would even know who I was. I'm like, little old me. And she just thanked me for doing the video. She said she watched it and, you know, just thank you for putting their story out there. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it's sad because people have been calling out Diddy and this was his response. Because he was seeing all the smoke on social media. So let me show y'all his response here. His response wasn't so brotherly. Brother love. I'm trying to find it. It's like, we got a lot of damn posts on this page. Now I'm like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. TT's always scrolling. Damn, where is brother love's response? Hold on. I got to go down even further. I thought I had it pulled up already. Okay, so that was Freddie. Let's go up. You know how they be like so many posts on your page? That was Kanye. Ooh, don't tell me Instagram took it down, honey. I'm not seeing it. I wonder if they took it down. Sometimes they'll come and take stuff off my page. I'm literally scrolling. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. Found it. Okay, here it is. Let me share my screen here. All right, so this is what Diddy said um, after seeing Freddie P crying. And Babs also did an interview with another, I think, another YouTuber. She did an interview, and she was talking about her contract and her days in making the band. Then we seen Willie. You know, Willie came out, and he talked about how they were in bad contracts. So this was Brother Love's response. This is not, this is not brotherly. He says, stop all your crying, bitching, and moaning. Hustle harder. Get the fuck out of our way. Who like, what? And then got the nerd to write down here, no ego, just hustle, love. And then had black emojis and all this other shit. And so, <laughs> so this was my response to, you know, brother love. I said, uh, hold on, where's my response? I wrote it in the comments. There we go. I went to the comments. I'm replying to this shit. So I said, he calls himself brother love. Yet that post was very ungodly and uncalled for, shaking my head. These young people helped to fully rebrand him and rejuvenate his sinking career after all the negative press from various issues in the late 90s and 2000s. And he got the nerve to tell them to stop crying. If anything, show them genuine love, brother love. OK, so that was his response to Freddie P and all them, um, you know, boo, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. OK, and I just I thought it was tacky. I thought, you know, if, if you're not going to address it properly don't just ignore it like you do everything else when they accused you of, of killing biggie did you not ignore the documentary when you was trending on twitter you ignored it right so you should have just ignored this because you know him saying that people are crying and being bitch asses or whatever the hell he was saying remember he, he coined that word bitch assness back in the day i thought that was trash you know because freddie was really pouring his heart out and um so for that to be his response i just thought that was you know that was trash and so I think after seeing all of the drama on the internet with Diddy and Freddie and then, you know, Diddy's response still not being humble, I think that is what forced Mace's hand with this diss track. And I was here for it. I even took some notes on the, the bars that I liked. Because see, unlike The Breakfast Club, I didn't care about the auto-tune. I listened. Use my ears. I use my listening tools. My listening. So one of the things that he said in there that, you know, that just made me laugh, hoodie. He says... You from Mount Vernon, stop repping Harlem. <laughs> and I thought that's so funny because Diddy does act like he's from Harlem and like he invented the Harlem shake. And you know, Mason's like, nah, you need to go back to claiming Mount Vernon. You're not one of us, okay? You're not from Harlem. Um, he also said, 
Niggas never pay their artists, but they love to pay the freaks. How you doing? You know, they'll pay to get the ping ping sucked, but you know, pay their artists fairly. Crickets. Okay. Then he also said, love don't steal my nigga, change your name. I see no integrity in your name. Every producer you ever sold their samples. So also accusing him of stealing samples from, you know, up and coming producers. And I've heard that in the streets. Um, another thing he said, he talked about the brunch. He mentioned that brunch that might have went over people's heads. The brunch he was talking about was the Rock Nation brunch, that video that I just showed you from 2020 when Diddy was toasting to black excellence and was, you know, bragging with Jay-Z and Meek and all the other, you know, upper echelon people on how far they've made it in the industry. So that was the brunch part that he was talking about. So, you know, Mace has been keeping his neck on Diddy. I mean, he's keeping his foot, excuse me, on Diddy's neck. You know, Diddy's an energy vampire. That's why I use the meme that I use. He's an energy vampire. He sucks a lot of people for their energy, their youth, and then he just spits them out. And, and even one thing, another thing he said in the rap that was crazy is that if you guys don't know, some of the publishing that Mace worked on with Diddy and songs that Mace wrote, they're in Justin Combs' name. Now, I didn't know that. He, spe he dropped that hot tea. I wasn't ready for that. So basically, if y'all don't understand, what he did is what uh, DJ Khaled does. You know how DJ Khaled put his son aside, even though he was like six months old in a pamper, but he put him down as an executive producer on his albums? That is so when Asad gets older, he'll always have that royalty coming in. Well, looks like P. Diddy did the same thing to Justin Combs. So meanwhile, while Justin Combs was probably getting breastfed, okay, and getting his diaper changed, and had nothing to do with what was going on in the studio creatively, he now, I think he's about 22, 23 years old, he's eating off of the publishing that Mace should be eating off of and using to feed his own children. That's crazy. So my son, I, I penned this, I wrote this song. My kids aren't eating off this song the way they should be, but your son who was in a pamper and getting breastfed, he's eating off of the song. How does that work? See, that's the difference when you actually sit down and you listen to what somebody's saying instead of dismissing it and saying, oh, it's too much auto-tune. You know what I mean? Like he was saying some real shit. He was dropping some real gems. He was spilling some real tea in that diss track, okay? Y'all know me, I'm old school, honey. Like back in the day when you hear a good song, that's how we learn songs. You write shit down. Like, you say, hold on, you say, what? Oh, shit, Justin Combs, the brunch. You know what I mean? I was writing down the shit he was saying. Like, oh, damn, Mace ain't playing, honey. Okay, so he was, he was keeping it really, really real. And I respect him for that, you know? So before people say, oh, Mace is just bitter and... He needs to go sit down. Y'all got to understand that there was so much that go. There's so much that goes into making music. And when we were growing up, we were given when we like when you bought a CD or even an album um, or a cassette. OK, these were physical copies of music in that CD. If you're a kid from the 90s, you can attest to this. We read those booklets from front to back. That is how I know who Static Major is. You know, for so long, I knew Dallas Austin's name before I even knew his face. I had no idea what Dallas Austin looked like until the TLC Behind the Music documentary. But I had been seeing his name since I was in the fifth grade. And you know, me being a fifth grade, I'm like, oh, he must live in Texas because his name is Dallas Austin. So I'm like, damn, that Texas man is always on the TLC, you know, album, you know, because that's my mind as a fifth grader. But we used to read our stuff, but see what they've done now. And I think they did this so that way they can scam even more in the music industry. Now you guys have streaming. So what streaming has done, it's only showing you guys the face of the artist. The average teenager is not going to Google who wrote this song, who produced this song, who made this beat. If I was to ask my child now, who was this, who was that, he wouldn't know. But if you ask him the face of a song like Little Dirk or Drake, he knows them. But if I said, well, who produced Drake's track or who, you know, helped co-write on Cardi B's album, whatever, they don't know. 
because they are being indoctrinated to just go off of streaming and looking at music videos. And there's not, they're not understanding there's a whole team of people behind the scenes. And that's why I, I feel very passionate about this because I know how that is for people to just take and never give you any shine, never give you any credit, you know what I'm saying? Or act like you don't even fucking exist. So Mace has every right to be upset. Y'all forget he penned some of the dopest songs that we still bang to this day. Mo Money, Mo Problems, you know what I'm saying? That was Mace's song. Even Stevie J talked about it recently, how Biggie took the song from him. Now, those were Biggie's lyrics, but that was initially Mace's song. Mace did a lot for a bad boy. So I'm, I'm going to play y'all this old Angie Martinez interview real quick. This might be a long stream, but I don't care. I got shit to talk about. So we, we, I got time today. We're going to talk. But I'm going to show y'all this old Angie Martinez interview that came out, I think, like in 2017. Um, that Mace, you know, a lot of people have missed this, but Mace was talking about it, you know, why he feels away. Let me hold up. Let me pull this up here. Share my screen real quick. Okay, listen to what Mace is, is saying here. Love. I wrote all those songs. No money, no problem. The story what we is? would have to get to at another time. Okay, I'm I never had I never asked to be that. Anybody that knew me, even Cam knew me since 14. I always knew I was gonna do something other than rap. In my interviews, a lot of times, mm -hmm. even you ask free mating and people like that. I used to say I'm only doing one album. They would laugh. Mm -hmm. I said, I know I was put on this earth to do something more than just rap. So it just came to me at a time when everybody else then wanted to come to me. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of times, even like with Puff and different people, at one time I told Puff, if you want me to go with you anywhere, I need you to go up to the station and I need you to apologize for some of the things you said, because when you put a perception out there about me, that perception don't go away. So then I'm standing by you dancing and people are looking like, I've just said he, this about him, why is he with them? So a lot of things I've done just to be the bigger person. Like I did the bad boy tour. I did the bad boy tour to be the bigger person. No matter what money they gave me, it wasn't what I was worth. The bad boy tour, it wouldn't have been the same if I didn't walk on that stage. Mm -hmm. But I did that for the fans. So for 20 years, I've been taking the shorter end of everything to just make things go the way they needed to go. Mm -hmm. If you think about even, you know, doing music with Puff, a lot of the songs, I came to Puff with those songs. Done. People, people, they never give me credit for that. All my awards went to Puff. I wrote all those songs. Problems. Yeah, but that was on Older. Big Album. Right. So that was songs I had as my single that they gave the Biggie. Got it. For his album. Mm -hmm. Do you not get paid for those even now? Yes, but oh, I'm yeah. saying like if you if you knew that Mace was the one doing all of that, you would see me in a different light. Even today, people praise Bad Boy. The gold, the real golden era of Bad Boy, I was spearheading. Mm -hmm. Biggie made it. And I'm not, you know, Biggie's taking Biggie. away, right? You're not taking I'm away. Under nothing. Biggie. I'm nowhere near Biggie. Right, right, right. I gotta catch myself so somebody catch that and try to run with it. Right. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, good catch, I'm good saying catch, when nice. Biggie, I'm saying when Biggie passed away, right. and the company is in ambiguity, and everybody is lost and in shambles. It was my pen mm -hmm. that made Bad Boy rise to the occasion. It was my style to the point you think I was following Puff and that was my style. It, it, mm -hmm. I'm being number two on my own intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. I feel like that line really bothered you. What? Okay, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. Um, but he's, he's speaking some truth. And so what people did when that interview came out in 2017, Oh, he's lying. He's just bitter. The more money, more problems wasn't his song. Well, oh, well. Stevie J just spilled the tea two days ago. If y'all do not know, Stevie J, uh, you know, not only was he getting his peen sucked on fucking during that interview, but Stevie J also had um, TV One's Unsung. So, and I watched it. So let me show y'all this clip from Unsung with Stevie J. Since people swapping down, Mace was lying and he's just bitter. Stevie J spilling the tea. So let me uh, share my screen real quick. Let me 
Just a second. Y'all know TT bring receipts, honey. I bring receipts. Let's go. I have a great story about more money, more problems. Mace, it's this rapper named Mace. I don't know if you heard this guy. He goes, I got this loop right here. I want you um, to sample this and, and make me a track out of this right here. No problem. Put the bass line on it. Do, 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 do. We play the guitar parts on it. Somebody poked their head in the door. It was big. It was like, who, who's that for? Like, that's Mace thing. He like, oh, you don't have to give me that joint. He took it and it became another number one record for Stevie J. With our largest capacity, oh, third round. Grammys mean to me. Like the first one was for all the hard work and dedication. Okay. So y'all just watch that snippet. So for everybody who was still talking shit about Mace in 2017 and saying that he's lying and that was Biggie's song, Stevie J just confirmed in 2022 that was Mace's song. Biggie overheard it and wanted to be on the track. And because Biggie was the bigger star, it was on Biggie's album featuring Mace. But that was initially Mace's song. So, okay, you so again, when you understand music and you understand the music process and the behind the scenes stuff, I'm not gonna argue with you with, with you young people that were born in the 2000s about how things don't matter anymore. Credit will always matter. Yes, it's been a long time. Yes, it's been 20 something years, but imagine somebody taking credit for your intelligence, taking credit for things that you created, and then not even acknowledging you and disrespecting you along the way. Because don't get it twisted. When Mace got tired and he left to go be a pastor, Diddy was throwing shade at him behind the scenes. And the same thing that the other gentleman had said that I had talked about, uh, Sauce Money, he said the same thing. So it was like all this mess was being said about Mace behind the scenes and telling folks not to work with him. If you guys remember, y'all don't forget shit because I'm a fan of these people. Kanye even apologized to Mace in 2020. People forget that. Let me bring this receipt out. So if all this is no big deal and who cares, why is Kanye apologizing to Mace? Because even Kanye understands like, damn, it was messed up. And he had dissed Mace on a, on a, not really dissed him, but he had said, you know, some choice words about Mace leaving the industry. Y'all remember that? Thank you, Liz. She's like, I remember that. Let me show y'all these receipts. So on, uh, Kanye had a song um, on his 2010 record called Devil in a New Dress. And he rapped, he says, don't leave while you're hot. That's how Mace screwed up. And so... Basically, he came back and he said this in 2020 because Mace was demanding an apology. Because remember, around this time, Kanye was crying about his masters and his publishing. See, in 2010, he was still kind of new to the game. He probably didn't have access to all the stuff that he has access to now. So it had been years. Kanye was wanting his publishing from Rockefeller, from Jay-Z. And rumor had it that Jay-Z had sold Kanye's publishing to get his own publishing. It was a whole bunch of mess. This went down in 2020. So Mace had basically went out publicly and says that, um, you know, you need to apologize. So Mace says, I know today you may see things differently. So you owe me and my family a public apology and some, if anyone owes you one. For alluding to the fact that me following God at the height of my career was a bad decision. So that is what Mace had said to Kanye West on Twitter. So Kanye came back and he says, Mace is right about that line. I always felt funny about that line. Mace is one of my favorite rappers, and I based a lot of my flow off of him. I'm the king of ooh, can I'm the king of ooh, can I get away with that bar? So I reap what I sow when the next generation does it to me. Okay? So, like I said, I keep receipts, honey. So Mace has every right to fill away. You know what I'm saying? Because it was bigger than just okay, get over it. You didn't get the publishing. You didn't get the money, but his reputation was also being sullied. He tried to come back in the rap game several times and he really couldn't. And a lot of that was because he was being blackballed. So 
that was really big of Kanye to apologize to him. So props to Kanye. Now I don't know all this other shit you're doing in 2022, brother. Okay, you're you're tripping, yay. But you know, y'all know I got a soft spot for yay. So it is what it is. Um, so let me go ahead and read some of these super chats. I've been just doing my little stream for at least already 30 minutes. Wow, time is flying. Okay. Uh, Mr. Male Sensitivity said 1999. He says, uh, I appreciate that breakdown. I learned a lot. And brought and you brought back some fond memories. We listened to a lot of the same artists. I had no idea Devonte was an R and B thug. Yes. So you watched my Static Major uh, documentary. Thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. Yes, that's another person who does not get his roses. Now Devonte was a thug. He was going around slapping people. You know what I'm saying? Putting hands on people. He tried to put hands on Stevie J, and Stevie J shut that shit down. Okay. Stevie J low key rescued Timbaland. <laughs> okay, Magoo, Genuine, and Missy, you know what I mean, from Devante, because Devante was beating everybody ass back in the day. And um, so I'm glad you liked it, you know, because these are hits. I listen to a lot of old school stuff. I listen to new school stuff, too. Y'all know when I throw my Discord parties, we do new and old. But I just get tired of people who created the music that are now iconic classics not getting their respect. That's why also in the documentary, I made sure to feature LaShawn, okay? LaShawn was a great songwriter. He, I mean, he wrote Michael Jackson's song, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we, we have to start, LaShawn Daniels, we have to start giving people their roses. He's dead now. He died in like 2019 of a car accident, like a car crash. You know, but yeah, he wrote that Michael Jackson song. So it was just really fun to like, I had, I had such a fun time creating this documentary. So thank you so much um, for watching it. I really appreciate it. And, I, and thank you for the feedback. Um, KJ, Sim 499, she says, hey T, loving the hair. Glad to see you're doing well. Keep shining. Thank you so much, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, Cam sent 1999 says on my way to a PTA event, wanted to send some love. No diddy, LOL. I'll catch the playback. Don't free. No hashtag. Don't free Jesse. Thank you so much, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, Marvin D sent 10 says, Hey lady in red looking gorgeous as always. I'm headed to the gym. I'll catch the playback when I get home. Awesome. Thank you for stopping through. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Donna Dash sent $13.99 says, Hey T, hope you're doing well. That black billionaire brunch was just a bunch of raccoons getting together. Also, brother love is just to hide who he really is. Mm. I know that's right. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. Johnny S says, You are amazing, T. I love you. I graduated from nursing school in May. I also emailed you a story about Puerto Rico withholding a newborn from a black couple. Tragedy. Wow. Thank you so much for the super chat and congratulations on graduating from nursing school. You should be very proud of yourself because we definitely need more doctors and nurses out here. So thank you. Um, Brenda Boone sent a 499 super sticker. Thank you, Brenda. Harley Quinn says, Diddy only takes care of his women, not his artist. Mm. Andrea B says, I bet Diddy won't come back with bars. No, he won't. Or has somebody write them bars, honey. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Let's see here. Beastly Sin 5 says, I guess when Puff said, take that, take that, he meant his artist his money. Damn. <laughs> I guess so, honey, because that's exactly what he's been doing. He's been taking that. So thank you for the super chat. Uh, young Kobe says, Mace, you ain't no architect. You just a nigga who knows how to market death. Yeah, wasn't that part powerful? That was powerful. Um, sell your soul to go to a brunch. Niggas turn sweet after drinking that punch. Wait a minute, what was going on at these parties? I can't stand you. <laughs> That's how I felt when he dropped that line too. I was like, okay, shit. What happened after the damn, the camera got cut off. After, you know what I'm saying? They shut off the camera. So I don't know, but he, I'm telling you, if you really listen to what Mace is saying, he was spilling some tea, honey. So thank you, young Kobe, for coming back with that. Appreciate you. Um, Jay Mako sent five, says, hey, T, I'm glad you are healthy. Diddy is a... Uh, Barusami, I don't know what that is. A Barusami, my mom was just talking about him. She can't stand him, LOL. She was in the entertainment business. Wow. Yeah. A lot of people who grew up, like I said, in the 90s, 
like we don't have the same love and affection for brother love that a lot of the young people do you know like my kids you know they don't have an issue with diddy they're like you know because they know him as brother love so he's just the old man on instagram you know in his versace robe going for a swim and taking pictures with his kids that are around my kids' age so they don't know but you know for us as parents like we're, we're just you know, whatever child no we're not checking for him like that because he's done so many people dirty you know what i'm saying um or Rondé wellington says hey t i feel like the previous bad boy artist should come together and file a big lawsuit against diddy and sue him for millions mm. I, I don't know you know i told y'all last time i met kima from total i got a chance to hang out with her at um miss deb's studio we were all out there and what was this october when i was in atlanta you know and the lady is still talented you know, even Vita came through and I didn't, you know, I was so late. I'm like, you guys look just alike. Y'all are both short and little. And they're like, we're sisters. I was like, oh shit, I'm so, I had no idea. Kima and Vita were sisters. I never knew this. And they're looking like, yeah, we're sisters T. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, carry on. Cause they were like jamming out. So like Vita's rapping and, and Kima's like singing shit, child. Yeah, but they were like really cool. But it's sad because you would think like, they'd be bigger than what they were. They were like huge at their peak. I was a huge total fan, you know? So it, it's sad. Yeah, I really did not know that. I was like so embarrassed. Cause I'm like, you guys are just alike. You guys are both itty bitty and skinny and short. And they're like, yeah, we're sisters. I'm gonna calm down. <laughs> I never knew that. <laughs> I said, why didn't y'all work together? I said, if y'all would've worked together, I would've known that. But, you know, they were trying to just make their own path. You know what I'm saying? So, but they're both really cool. They're both cool women. They're real funny. Um, let's see here. Uh, Chris Damoni says, honey, that red hair is given. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Live from NYC sent $20. And he says, I understand that Diddy has been a dream killer and time does not heal wounds. But after 20 plus years, you got to move on. If not for yourself, then at least for your kids. Mm. Thank you so much for the super chat, love. And I get that. And I think for the most part, everybody has moved on. But I think what hurts is not getting that recognition because they really changed the game. You know, that bad boy era was very powerful, just like the Rockefeller era and the, you know, uh, Rough Riders, you know, with Eve and DMX and Swiss Beats. And it's like, even with Rough Riders, they had their fraction, they had their issues, but when it came to it, they always gave each other props. They always, you know, recognized each other. It was never bigger than, than it was, you know, even though DMX was the star, like the main star in Eve, it was never bigger than all of them. Like they all contributed, but with Bad Boy, the only face that you still see is Diddy. Like nobody says, well, where's Eve? We see Eve, she's doing great. Where's Swiss Beats? He's doing great. Uh, where's, uh, well, DMX died, unfortunately. But yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, for the most part, we can call out these names and they're doing okay. But when it comes to bad boys, like, where's Mace? I guess he's preaching. Where's Craig Mack? He died. Black Rob, y'all seen how Black Rob was? I mean, he died. You know, it's like, where's Total? Like, you know, nobody's really eating well from that camp. And I think that's the difference, you know, which is sad. But thank you for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. Siobhan Edwards sent 20 says, we got time for the tea. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Appreciate you. Natasha F., my, my sis from Haiti, sent 20 says, this is Natasha from Haiti. YouTube is not showing me your notifications, sis, but, make, but I'll make sure to watch later. Share and like and keep the good work going, sis. We got you. The devil of YouTube can't keep you down. Thank you so much, sis. And thank you, you know what I'm saying, for the super chat and always support. And I appreciate it. Um, Suburban Child says, this is why I love the credit feature on Spotify. It's crazy when you realize how many hands go into a hit song. Exactly. A lot of hands do. They do. So thank you for that. Um, let's see here. The girl is real. Sent 10 says, I need to send this because Mace was that dude. He carried bad boy. You had to be alive for it. Thanks, T. Exactly. Thank you so much. He did. When Biggie died, because you got to realize back then that record label was starting to fall off. Biggie had died. 
And then it was just a bunch of string of bad news. Then he tried to reinvent Shine. Like Shine was supposed to, you know, take Biggie's place and all this stuff. And um, it, it didn't work out. Then he had the incident with the club shooting and the gun and all that stuff. So it was a lot of bad press that was following, you know, Puffy at the time. So, you know, Mace did a lot. Mace did a lot. He really did carry Bad Boy. And that's why he used the band. Because even back then, remember, when Making the Band first came out, a lot of y'all weren't probably weren't even born. But Lou Pearlman was the original Making the Band. And remember, he made Old Town. He made uh, the girl from Pussycat Doll. She was on that show. I forgot what the group. And Eden's Crush. Eden's Crush. That was the damn. I'm bringing it back. Eden's Crush. He made those shows. But then what ended up happening is he got caught up in all types of like scamming shit, Ponzi schemes, all types of nonsense. Um, plus Backstreet Boys was coming after him in sync because he was stealing their money. So Lou Pearlman ends up getting locked up. So at that point, they're trying to remake the show. Yeah, Dream. Dream was Puffy's thing. Dream wasn't part of Lou Perlman. It was Eden's crush. Um, so that's when they reached out to Puffy and asked him, could he do the making of the band series? And that's what he did. That's when he did the um, making of the band with the rappers. Then he did it with the girls. Um, then he did it with Day 26. Danny D. Kane and then Day 26. But he was basically taking Lou Perlman's place. So that's why I say he owes them better than telling them to basically be quiet and stop being bitches and, and hustle her harder. Because he used those kids. He used that show as a stepping stone to rebrand himself. Because before that show, nobody was checking for Bad Boy or Diddy. We left them in the early 2000s. But when that show came out, it revamped them. It really did. We fell in love with Diddy again because we, we saw the magic that he made with Bad Boy. Thank you. I see a lot of 90s people in the chat writing 100 and saying preach. Thank you. It, you know what I'm saying? That Bad Boy era was powerful. So that's why we were so invested. Because at this point, we're not knowing about all these bad contracts. We're thinking Toto's good. Matt, you know, Craig Mack is good. You know, we know that Biggie died. But for the most part, we're thinking everybody's good. We're thinking Faith is good. So when he's trying to help these kids, that's why so many kids ran to audition because we grew up in that bad boy era. So we're thinking everything's all good. We're like really invested in this show and the show was good. You know, there was drama and, you know, even when I went back and I watched some of the old clips and I think about how exploitive the show is. But when you're young, you don't realize it. I remember the girl mysterious. Remember, she had that deep ass voice. She sounded like a female Biggie Smalls. And I don't think she was the best rapper. Like Babs was way better, no disrespect. But I remember Mysterious, she was so hungry, she wanted it. Remember her sister got killed. They found her body in like a trash can. This was on the show. Like we're watching this shit play out in real time. And they basically told her she had to choose between going to her sister's funeral or trying out. Think about how crazy that is. Y'all remember Mysterious? Okay, good, I'm not going crazy. Yes, y'all remember Mysterious. They told you gotta choose. If you want this, you'll try out. And then what happened? They didn't choose her and she flipped, remember? She cussed everybody out. She broke that glass with her hand. I said, damn, is this bitch hand made of steel? She was like, ah! she went, she had like a meltdown. I'm telling you like the 2000s TV was crazy. This was all unprecedented. She went crazy. She like broke the glass. She was cussing out Diddy. She was like, my sister died. I didn't get to go to my sister's funeral. And y'all ain't going to choose me. Y'all got me. She flipped. Tell me y'all remember that shit. Okay, so for him to act like, oh, y'all need to hustle harder. Stop the bullshit, Diddy, because we was there. Them kids hustle. They put their blood, sweat, and tears, literally blood, into that show. You know what I'm saying? Where's Mysterious today? I went to Google her. She's like speaking at elementary schools and shit. Like, hey, I'm Mysterious. You know what I mean? She's like doing like, you know, speaking engagements, which is cool. But yeah, like, nah, hell nah. Mace helped to reinvent Bad Boy and get them to a level that Diddy could have only dreamed of. Stevie J was one of the driving forces of Bad Boys. His pen game, his beat game, you know, he's an instrumentalist. If it wasn't for, what, for, for the things that Stevie D J did for Bad Boy, they would not have gotten that far either. So that's why, you know, as much as Stevie J irks some of us, 
we understand the contributions he made into like some of our most favorite hits. We know he's a big old freak with a King Kong long dong and doesn't know when to not get head. But at the end of the day, it doesn't take from his contributions. Stevie J did a lot for Bad Boy. Now, I will say this to be fair. Okay, to be fair, I will say this. Puffy didn't scam Stevie J. Stevie J got his bag. And I think the reason why Stevie J out of everybody, because Stevie J was fine. He blew a lot of his money, you know, on coke and females and child support. But Stevie J got his bag. That's why he don't have no beef with Puffy. Because people are like, well, Puffy can't be that bad because Stevie J rocks him. Well, Stevie J wasn't robbed. The reason why I feel like Stevie J was able to get that bag that he was able to get, Stevie J is a very talented man. He plays like somewhat like 10 or 11 instruments. He can make, he can compose music from scratch. That is a dying art form. Not many people can do that. Stevie J is one of those people. Prince is one of those people. Rest in peace to Prince. <laughs> okay. Represent Minnesota. Hey, you know what I mean? There, not everybody can do that. A lot of people nowadays have to sample constantly, constantly. Stevie J can make music from scratch. That is what people did. That is the difference now between music now and music back then and in the 80s and 90s and 70s. Things were made from scratch. You felt the people's energy, their soul. You felt what they put into their music. You heard every, you know, bass sound, drum, guitar sound. You heard all that. It wasn't made on Fruity Loops. Okay? It wasn't made on the computer. They, if you wanted a guitar sound, you hired a guitarist. If you wanted a piano sound, you hired a pianist. And they played those sounds. Music was, you know, was made from scratch. That's why today it's not the same. It's not the same feeling. Even now, they don't even have band in some schools. In our school, I had, I told y'all this before, um, I play clarinet. I don't anymore. But from the time I was in the fifth grade till I was in ninth, then people told me it wasn't cool anymore. Like, oh, you're a nerd. You're, that's stupid. You play the clarinet. And I quit band. But I was in band from fifth to ninth grade because in the 90s, it was very important to learn how to play an instrument. Put, put a teacup in the, in the thing if you were in band. Bitch, I was in band. I had a clarinet, honey. I could probably still play a whole new world to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to, you had to know how to read music. C's and D's, and you have to know where to put your fingers. Do, 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 do. I could bet you if, if somebody was to give me a clarinet and give me the sheet music for a whole new world, I could probably still play it to this day. That is one of my favorite songs on the clarinet to play. We played it at our, at our seventh grade band concert. <laughs> but you see that like the dumbing down of society, they don't even have, you know, music programs in a lot of schools nowadays. Most, how many kids do you know walk around with instruments? I be looking out my window. Uh, there's a lot of kids in this neighborhood. I don't see not one instrument. Everybody got a football, a basketball, or, you know, I don't know, a cell phone. I don't see kids carrying flute cases and, you know, trumpet cases and saxophones. So I don't know. Y'all have to be there, man. We grew up in a really cool era. It wasn't perfect, but, you know, somebody said they played drums. Kemi says she played the clarinet too. Okay, fellow clarinet. Maxine says she played the clarinet. I'm in love. I'm in love with 4-1, played the flute. Uh, Toy Satellite says they played the bass clarinet. My peer says saxophone player here. See, look at all these people. Alberto said he played the trombone. Wow. Bitch, we need to start a band. The lovely T marching band. <laughs> we need to start a band. I didn't know a lot of y'all played instruments too. Okay. All right. Somebody played the tuba, the cello. That's what's up. Yeah. To this day, I still listen to like instruments on YouTube. Like I'll go and Google, like, you know, um, the instrument version or like the clarinet version of a song. Um, my heart will go on. I listen to that in flute form, clarinet form, piano. I love listening to like instrumentals because that's how we were raised. Even on a lot of CDs back then, they would have instrumentals. You'd have the song and all that stuff. Then they would add like the instrumentals. So you could hear the instruments and the beats. You don't really get all that stuff anymore. But yeah, I listen to a lot of instrumental stuff. Like when I want to calm down or sleep, I'll listen to like the flute version of My Heart Will Go On. I'm <laughs> Try 
Okay, it works, shit. <laughs> do, 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 Yeah, I mean, not done. That should be playing in the back. <laughs> I do. I love instruments. So, man, I was here for Stevie J's Unsung. Like, it brought me back to a time, you know, when we were growing up. Like, that was, that was dope. And I don't see that anymore. You know, I feel like music is becoming a lost art and it's so disposable. That's why I put that clip about Beyonce talking about how everything is just, you know, quick, quick, quick. People don't, people don't listen to a whole, a whole uh, body of, of, of an album. It's just put out a single, put out a single. You know, so that documentary, I really went hard because I really wanted you guys to understand how much goes into making one song and how many hands are in the pot. You know, and I feel like if your hands were in the pot, genuinely, you deserve that credit. And if the artist had nothing to do with the damn song besides the verse, you should not get publishing credit because a lot of songwriters, they don't get that money that they deserve. And at this point, it's getting to the point where artists are splitting you know, these credits with, you know, the random homeboy in the studio, like the dude, the weed man. Your job is to roll up blunts. Why are you getting credited on this album when that could go to the songwriter? If I'm writing a song, I'll be damned if the weed man is on the damn album getting album credits. But it happens all the time. Or the bad bitch who sucked everybody off in the studio. She's out here getting a credit. Why? You know what I mean? So these are real conversations that people don't talk about. But, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did that documentary. I'm glad y'all like it. <laughs> um, let me see here. Oh, Luther's boy. Luther's boy said $99.99. Thank you so much, love. He says, hey, T, just showing you some love. Some, just showing some love to my number one YouTuber, blogger, and content creator. Phenomenal work on the static major deep dive. You are truly blessed in your journalism, researching, and editing abilities. Keep up the best content on the internet, hashtag untouchable. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I'm so glad that you enjoyed the documentary and I'm glad you're able to take something away from there. And I'm glad you noticed the editing because child, that's what takes the longest because I, you know, I was doing like a lot of just different things. I was playing around. Um, I probably spent like close to like $500 on like transitions and just different stuff because I really wanted to like, make it feel like a documentary. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to like use like the stock footage and you know, I wanted y'all to feel like y'all were in the operating room when static was getting operated on. So I really put a lot of work into it and I'm gonna do more. Like I'm having fun with this and I'm glad that you guys are supporting my documentary. So I'm just gonna step up the visuals even more, even more, even more. So thank you. Um, Let's see here. P Diddy, Blackballed Orlando Bloom. What? <laughs> Child, you spilling some tea. P. Diddy blackballed Orlando Bloom. They didn't offer him to come back to the Proud family. Orlando exposed Diddy for touching. Well, I'm not going to say that just for the fact that, you know, we're on live. Um, I didn't know anything about this. So allegedly, I'm just reading the super chat. OK, I, I don't know anything about that. I didn't know he blackballed Orlando Bloom. Thank you, God's boy. <laughs> um, Andrea B. Uh, let's see here. Disappeared again. Oh, God, there's a lot of super chats. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to find it. Oh, Jared sent five dollars. He said, not penis, T. It's pianist. Oh, did I, <laughs> did I mispronounce the word? Oh, sorry. So pianist, not penis. <laughs> Y'all know my accent, honey. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. <laughs> Oh, um, let's see here. Jay does not care. It says, I remember the commercial called Save the Music for Schools back in the 90s. You remember that? Yes. Remember that? Remember they had Nas involved? And Nas used to be like, Save the music, y'all. Save the music, y'all. Say, say, say the music, y'all. Yeah. That was real. They was trying to get rid of the musical programs out of schools. Yep. I remember that. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um, AJ Clinton says, I played the clarinet in high school from 6th to 11th grade, and I still have it. Love you, T. Love you, too. My sister has my clarinet. She ended up taking clarinet, so I gave it to her. I don't know where it's at now, but she had it last. <laughs> but thank you. Um, Curly and un Unconventional says, Diddy was the black Vince, Vince McMahon. Oh. Shake my head. I got my degree in music and I played the clarinet since seven years old and still do at 31. That is awesome. Y'all made me want to buy a clarinet. Like y'all made me want to buy an instrument 
and, you know, take up, you know, just playing it again. Because I, I, the only reason why I stopped was because people were like, that's not cool. Like, you look weird walking, you know, walking through the school with a clarinet case. Like, it was called elementary and junior high, but by high school, people were like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, it's a clarinet, you know? And I, we lived in the hood, so it was like, what is that little black case? So I just, I was like, fuck it, I'm, I'm dropping out of band. <laughs> but clarinet gang, I might have to go buy me one. Um, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, the Vince McMahon reference, child, I need to do a deep dive on, on Vince McMahon. Oh, rest in peace to Razor Ramon. He died yesterday. And Tracy Braxton, too. Rest in peace to her. I'm a big fan of Tracy Braxton. Um, the Braxton Sisters show, that was my show. I watched them for years. So I had no idea Tracy was even sick. So definitely rest in peace to her. Um, and shout out to the, to the black man who tried to come for me for saying Razor Ramon was fine back in the day. Like, y'all be up here jocking Kim Kardashian, racially ambiguous, you know what I'm saying, IG models. God forbid I say Razor Ramon was fine. Sister, they're only trying to have you look at him as being fine, so that way you hate your own features. I said, bro, really? The, the, sir, get out of my damn comments on Instagram. <laughs> I said, did he just really go there? Like, I can't think that Razor, I didn't date him, I just said he was cute. Razor Ramon was fine, honey. Yes, rest in peace to Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall. Okay? There was a lot of fine wrestlers. Shit, they were like little, you know, demigods. They were tall, had bodies. Okay? Shawn Michaels, fine. Bret the Hitman Hart, back in the day, fine. <laughs> y'all know I'm a wrestling fan, but I'm also a woman. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm a fan of wrestling. I'm here for the moves, but I'm also here to see the six packs and the cute faces. <laughs> How do we get out of wrestling? I can't stand y'all. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Johanna Lopez said 999 says her sister was looking out for her too. I think what could have happened to her. I'm sure we're gonna witness Diddy's downfall. Whose sister was looking out for her? Oh, you talking about oh uh Kima and uh Vita. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um live from NYC, send another 10 says facts. I'm 43. And I remember we used to think all of them was getting paid. Yes, we did. Because back in the day, if we if you were on TV, people automatically thought you were rich. That's just what it was. You're on TV, you could be on the news talking about, hey, you know, my house burned down. Did you get some money? Like, if you were on TV in the 90s, people automatically thought you were rich. We just did. We thought everybody who was on TV, if you were in a music video, you could be in the background dancing. Um, my homeboy told me he was like, uh, he was a background dancer for Aaliyah. He was in Aaliyah's uh, One in a Million video back in the day. And he said, some people come up to him and be like, oh, I know you paid now. And he's like, I'm a background dancer. <laughs> 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 but that's how I was back then. You see a friend in the video like, I know that bitch got money. She dancing with Aaliyah. <laughs> But it's just, that's just what it was. Like, we just assumed if you were on the song, if you were on the video, we just knew you was getting paid, honey. Like, I wish I could be rich like that. Like, background, you know, dancer 201. <laughs> Meanwhile, they got one good check, and that was it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Keishana says, hey, T, you're such an inspirational and amazing speaker. I look forward to your commentary daily. Keep doing what you've been blessed to do. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. Um, Mo Ali says, yes, we need. We had to read sheet music. Yep, we had to. And you uh, and let you not know the difference between a C and a D and an E C back then. Teachers could talk to you crazy. That damn our band teacher. I remember my homegirl. She played the flute. And she kept fucking up. That damn band teacher. He took her flute. He wiped it. They were just wiping on their fucking sleeve. He put it to his lips. He said, "This is how you play the notes." <laughs> he used to flip out. They would snatch your instrument right out your hand. They brushed that shit off on their shirt. Let it be a clarinet. He brushed it off on their shirt. You know we had that reach. I used to hate when he would like. Great, like we like the clearness. We have to know how to play because we did not want our teacher. He was a smoker. I don't want your mouth on my on my clarinet. So I did not use to miss B. Y'all remember them days in band? Our teacher did not play Mr. Gregerson. He did not play. He will snatch your instrument and put his mouth on it. Like this is how you play a note. This is what the C is supposed to sound like. So for us as clarinet players, we'd be like, you better be on your shit because he's not about to grab my clarinet. I don't want that smoker blowing on my shit. But he would do that with the flutes all the time. He grabbed that shit and then hand it right back to them. And then you'd be scared because you're like in seventh grade. It's 
right, well, do I wipe it off or do I just put my mouth on it and keep going? <laughs> Y'all are bringing back memories, honey. Yes, that's how, I'm telling they didn't play. Band was no joke. Look, look at all the band people agreeing. Yep, they take the trumpet too. My homeboy Dustin, he was the trumpet player. He snatched that trumpet right out of his hand. And hand it right back to him. Now you play it. And so you know, as a kid, you're like, damn, do I wipe this spit out? Do I just keep, you just put it to your mouth and keep going. <laughs> yep, that was band class. Thank you, Mo Ali. Yep, we had to know how to read sheet music every night. I practiced my clarinet like at least for an hour because I didn't want my clarinet being snatched. I didn't want my teacher mouth on my shit. I'm a germaphobe. So I made sure to hit my damn notes, honey. I ain't play that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said choir was the same way back then. Oh wow. See, I never I never took choir. I couldn't sing. I wasn't blessed in that department. You know what I'm saying? So I never took choir. But um, yeah, I was in the band. Yep. I was in the band. Uh let's see here. Uh Rachel sent five dollars. She said she was a baritone player. Wow. That always amazed me when I see females with the big, big instruments like baritones. <clears throat> Tubas, like that's that's huge. I wanted something I could fit in my bag. But I didn't like the flutes. I thought the flute players, they were kind of sedity. They kind of thought they was all that. Like, girl, bye. It was always the like clarinets versus the flutes. And we was like more about that life. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, you know what I mean? Like, you couldn't tell us nothing. The clarinet players, the flutes were always like, you know, ditzy and, you know, like, I play flute. Like, girl, bye, whatever, flute. Flute your ass out of here. <laughs> We used to be beefing in bed, honey, against the flutes, especially they would put us, like, they would pin us against each other. So they'd be like, okay, clarinet, shall I play the top half? Flutes, you take this half. So it was always the flutes versus the clarinets, honey. And the flute girls, they just thought they was cute because they had the little flute. And we'd be, you know, we'd be out, we'd have our little reeds and shit. We'd be putting our little stuff together. You know, they just had one, they just had two pieces. We had, like, four pieces for our clarinets. We used to be in there beefing, honey. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I've been on already for an hour. This is crazy. I mean, it don't even feel like an hour. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Diva Beauty says, I remember the folks in the band. I regret not learning the flute, piano, bass, guitar. Not too many kids in the band, but I think my baby cousin plays an instrument. That's good. That's good. Um, Lonerscape says, I heard Lucky Day's song, I Used to Be, and I liked it. It has a lot of instrumentals. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Miss Muchilla's in the house. She says, I remember how they disrespected Mysterious. And if it wasn't for Free the Locks, they got away from Diddy still jerking them on his publishing. Yeah, that Mysterious situation was sad. Like I had to go back and watch that at the semi reminded me. And I was like, I do remember Mysterious. And then I remember it like everything just came flooding back the way they did her. And when she broke that glass, I was just like, oh my gosh. Um, let's see here. Alexi lately says, at least my man Kanye has some integrity and apologize. The latest deep dive was amazing. Love you, girl. Love you too. And thank you so much. That's that's the Kanye's number one fan right there. After my son, child, because he got tattoos. I don't know if he got tattoos. He got damn Kanye-related tattoos. Um, let's see here. Uh, T Boogie says, T, I love your channel. I'm ready to be a part of the Discord. I'll engage. I promise. Did you make the announcement about the opening yet? Yes, we had an uh, opening this Sunday, and about 600 people joined. So we announced it. It was open from like 10 o'clock in the morning until 4. So the Discord was open. It's now closed. So you might have missed it, but it was open. Um, but thank you for the super chat, love. Let's see here. BL Sherelle. Hey, sis. She says, that's why I mess with Tidal, because they're the only streaming platform with credits. Wow. Well, somebody's saying that Spotify does too, but I think you have to like click on a box or something to see the credits. So maybe Tidal gives it to you automatically. So thank you for that. So... I think I'm done with everything I needed to say about Mace and P. Diddy. Let me check my notes. I think I, I think I said everything. I did. So let's go ahead. I've been out here for already an hour. Let's talk about Will Smith and Jada. Shout out. 
All right, so Will Smith is now on a new hobo tour. Now, I remember all, you know, last, what, 2021 was the entanglement, the red tabletop. And then, you know, he was like writing a book. And then there was like, like little snippets coming from the book about him cheating or looking at other people. Some bullshit, child. Like every other day was something coming out of this Will Smith book. So now Will Smith is doing an interview with our good friend Robin Roberts. And Will Smith is out here lying to the people. And for what? I don't know. Ain't that serious, Will? So this is what Will Smith is out here saying. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Good old Will Smith. Chatter than Will about your marriage. I have decided that chatter about my life can be of a benefit to people. I think the chatter is a really, uh, chatter, chatter is the first stage to uh, having a real conversation and being able to truly explore if some of the things in your heart are loving or poisonous. You both have talked very candidly. It's a very famous story, infidelity in the marriage and how you navigated that. that there's, time. Never, there's never been infidelity in our marriage. Never been infidelity in the marriage? Never. <laughs> Jada and I talk about everything. We have never surprised one another with anything ever. Will Smith, uncross your legs and get the fuck on. Um, first of all, I love how, uh, I, I think I called her Robin Roberts. I'm sorry, Gail King. I said the wrong woman's name, Gail King. I love how she was like, never. <laughs> Even Gail King was surprised. Like, wait, what you mean never? Okay, so my thing is this. If there's never been any type of infidelity in your marriage, then what the fuck is August Alcina talking about? Okay? And why did y'all feel the need to address the whole situation during table talk? I think what you mean to say, Will, is that it's not considered infidelity because y'all have an open relationship. I think at this point in time, he needs to just be honest with what it was and what it is is that they have an open relationship and he, he's playing semantics. That's what he's trying to do. He's playing semantics and he's trying to make it look like, he's trying to basically gaslight us, like we're crazy. Oh, it's just chatter. There's never been infidelity. Well, I can't tell the way that that tear damn near dropped out your eye when Jada was talking about, I had an entanglement with August, with August, with August, an entanglement with August. Y'all remember the remix? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, if everything was copacetic, why was he, like, literally damn near in tears as Jada was explaining her entanglement? Remember, he was like, entanglement? Entanglement. An entanglement with August. <laughs> I think, at the end of the day, they've been putting too much of their business out there. And I think it kind of backfired. It made people look at them differently. So now he's trying to clean it up by gaslighting the audience and saying, there was never and never any infidelity. I mean, the fact that even Gail King was like, never? Like, you know what I mean? Because nobody's buying it at this point. Okay? Like, nobody's buying it. Let me, let me find that famous picture, that infamous picture of Jada in August versus Will in August. <laughs> I, you know, like, Like I told y'all before, this picture told me everything I need to know two years ago when I, when I, a few years ago when I told y'all way back then that Jada was creeping with this little boy. Look how you can tell she done got some new dick. Now look how she is with Will. Stone face. <laughs> Bored. <laughs> and then look how she is with, with uh, August. This ain't her husband. Why is she all teeth here? Teeth just shining bright. <laughs> That told me everything I did. I said, Jada get some new dick. <laughs> and we all know August is hung like a damn horse. So, I mean, just say that y'all in an open marriage uh, will and quit insulting our intelligence by trying to say that there's never been any infidelity. We know that you have a little Latina girlfriend that you go out there with. And, of course, she doesn't care because she's doing her own thing as well. Um, I just feel like at this point, he's put too much energy into this. Um, because like I said, he dropped the book and every other day there was something coming out 
about what was said in this book. Then they were also, remember, they were so proud to scream, bad marriage for life. But now it's, oh, our marriage is great. Our marriage is fine. You know, and, and people go through ups and downs in their marriage. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think at this point, they need to stop talking about their marriage. They need to stop using their marriage, you know, for fodder because it kind of blew up in their face, you know. And that's why August got mad because you're steadily talking about your marriage and trying to make it seem like everything's perfect. But meanwhile, you know, when nobody was home, I was creeping over there, you know. So I just think the whole situation is insane. But, sir, I'm going to leave, Will. I'm going to leave, Will. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm leave, Will. Jada got some of that. I don't give what y'all say. She got that damn pen. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Desiree Michelle says, send a love from L.A. Marching band in the house. Played clarinet for four years. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Desiree. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Jatoya Hall says, are you going to talk about Royce Reed and Howard's kid? I would love to hear your thoughts and love from the shy. I heard about it. I'm not going to talk about it and make a video um, just for the fact that those are children that's dealing with a sexual issue. And I'm sure Royce is already embarrassed, flustered and trying to figure out what to do as a mother. Um, so me personally, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, everybody's free to do what they want to do. But I don't I don't have any plans on making a video about it just because those are dealing with like minor children, including a seven year old and. I'm not going to hit on that, but I do know about it though. So thank you. Um, so now before I go, it's already been an hour. Let me talk about this whole Black Lives Matter, Taraji P. Henson, Jesse Smoulet situation. Now, we haven't seen Patrice Colliers, who was, you know, the founding madam of the Black you know, Lives Matter movement. Remember, once she got blasted for buying all these houses and, you know, using the people's money to go purchase homes that, funny enough, weren't in black neighborhoods. Now there's Black Lives Matter talk, but yet and still every home she bought <laughs> was in the suburbs. OK, it was around white people. So after she got caught out for that, we hadn't really heard too much from her. She's kind of been low key and joined her six houses. And now she wants to come and tell black people to support Jesse Smoulet. And she's calling his, you know, his sentence in racist. So let me go ahead and pull this up here. Give me just a second to share my screen. All right. Hey everyone, Patrice Colors here. I'm just logging in because I'm in Chicago and was able to see Jesse today. And he's strong, but what's happening inside is just, it's just unacceptable. Um, today is the first day that he's going to be able to get an actual bed. He's been sleeping on a restraint bed. Um, uh, they've also filed uh, for him to be released, um, filed to the appellate court. Hopefully, we'll learn by this week, uh, no later than Wednesday, if he'll get out. And honestly, we just need folks to keep tagging Free Jesse, um, keep posting um, we need folks to call um, the jails and check up on him, but also say that you think he should be freed. And the last thing is we need folks to challenge the misinformation and disinformation around this case. That's so critical. Um, what happened to Jesse can happen to any of us, and it's completely unacceptable. Thanks, y'all, and please take care of each other. First of all, <clears throat> let me come back on the screen. First of all, what happened to Jesse cannot happen to any of us because we're not out here making up fucking lies and creating situations for attention. I don't understand like this whole point of people acting like Jesse didn't do what he did. It's one thing if you want him to be free, that's your own damn business. But stop acting like there's not evidence, one, showing that he's a liar. And two, the people that he was in cahoots with, remember that the two MAGA guys who mugged him happened to be two big Nigerian guys. They already admitted to everything. They admitted to everything. Jesse had a relationship with these guys. He knew them from gay bathhouses and umpire in the Empire show. So, you know, I, I just it, at this point, like people are insulting people's intelligence. There are literally black people who are in prison right now 
for crimes that they did not commit. Kim Kardashian, you know, bless her heart, is a white woman. Look how many people she's been able to get out of, you know, jail or lessen their charges and, and, and get them out early. That is somebody who's really doing something in the justice system. The fact that people are putting so much energy into this Jussie Smollett bullshit. Why are y'all acting like he got five years in prison? Like, I, I'm not understanding this. They literally gave him five months and most likely he's not even going to do the five. He'll probably do maybe two to three months at best. I just, I just don't, I don't get it. And I, I'm really disappointed. And y'all know I love Taraji. I'm a huge Taraji fan. I've met Taraji. <clears throat> but I was really disappointed. Excuse me. I was really disappointed by her because she came out and she's basically taking up for Jesse and making excuses. Let me see if I can find. I thought I had it pulled up here. Oh, yeah, it's on my desktop. Hold on. Let me pull it up so I can read it to y'all. At this point, this is just getting, it's, it's starting to be a bit much. Okay, let me share my screen. All right. <clears throat> so this is what, <laughs> child. Hashtag free Jussie. Taraji says, I'm not here to debate you on his innocence, but we can agree that pu the punishment does not fit the crime. Emmett Till was brutally beat and ultimately murdered because of a lie. And none of the people involved with his demise spent one day in jail. Even after Carolyn Bryant admitted that her claims were false, no one was hurt or killed during Jesse's ordeal. He has already lost everything. To me as an artist, to not be able to create that in itself is punishment enough. He can't get a job. No one in Hollywood will hire him. And again, as an artist who loves to create, that is a prison. My prayer is that he is freed and put, and put on house arrest and probation because in this case, that would seem fair. Please hashtag free Jesse. Once again, black women running out here with these capes. <clears throat> Taraji, don't get yourself canceled running behind Jesse Smoulet. Now, we understand, you know, it's Cookie. That was your favorite son, Jamal, okay, compared to the other two. But don't, don't get canceled running behind him. And the fact that you can't even say that he's innocent, the fact that you're trying to gaslight us and say, I'm not here to debate if he's innocent or not, because you know he's not innocent. You know, I just, I'm just, I don't like the fact that this is being compared to Emmett Till. First of all, that was a, a, a baby, that was a 14 year old child who lost his life at a time when, you know, a lot of black people were not getting justice for crimes that were committed against them. That was a horrendous situation. I've spoken about that over the years when Carolyn Bryant, when it came out that she was still alive and well and that she had lied. It put a teacup. If I remember me dragging the hell out that old white broad. I didn't see any of these people come out and make statements. I didn't see any of these people talk about this shit when it was viral several years ago. Imagine the star, if the star power would have got behind that case like YouTubers did. Imagine if enough people who have all this wealth and, you know, acclaim in Hollywood came out and said, nah, we demand that she be prosecuted. Fuck that old white lady and her lies. We demand that something be done. When all this came out back in 2017, maybe something could have been done. But for all these people to be silent way back then, not make any type of tweet, comment, video, nothing. It was regular people like me and other people on YouTube who were holding that old white lady accountable. But now y'all want to sit there and drag that up and use that as a defense for Jussie? Miss me with the bullshit. Let that little boy rest in peace. His name should not have anything to do with this situation. Carolyn Bryant deserves to rot in prison the rest of her life. Hopefully they'll go to South Carolina and go arrest her ass because she's still living in the same damn house she's been living in for the past 20 years. But, at, at, but right now we're not talking about Carolyn Bryant and Emma Till. We're talking about Jesse. And two things can be right. We can be against what Carolyn Bryant did, lying and getting that child killed and lynched that way, and, and, and you know, thrown in the Chattahoochee River. 
And we can also be against what Jesse did. At the end of the day, to me, the punishment does fit the crime. He was looking at five to 10 years in prison. His celebrity status literally got him off, you know, a lot more lenient. Let somebody lie on you and make up some stuff about you. And let's see if you have the same attitude, like, well, it's just, you know, he's black and, you know, black people are railroaded. So who cares? No, it's not okay. And I think anybody who's lying on somebody and creating a false narrative, and especially, like I said, around that time, it was a very hot political climate. Granted, nobody died by the grace of God. But he really could have started a race war because tensions were so high back then. What if black folks really went hard for Jesse and ran and, you know, hurt the first white person or killed the first white person that they saw on behalf of Jesse's lying ass? Or what if white folks wanted to retaliate once they found out he was lying and started attacking and harming black people? Man, it's still, you know, stuff does happen to black people all the time still. But I'm just I'm using that case. You know, what I mean, so I, I don't I don't think the guy is literally in there for five months. I think at this point, all this hoopla about free Jussie, you got, they don't drug out the, the Black Lives Matter lady who we ain't seen since, you know, her houses came out in the news. Um, they don't drug her out. They got Taraji speaking on this shit like she's still on Empire and she's cooking. He's Jamal. Um, this hashtag to me is bullshit. He only got five months. He probably won't even do the full five months. Jussie's trying to play crazy and use this. Oh, he was on the psychotic bed or on the psychiatric bed. Who gives a shit? You're in jail. Not at the five star Hilton. And when you go to jail, from what people have told me, because I ain't never been to jail, because why? I don't want to go to jail, so I do the right fucking thing. If you don't want to go to prison, if you don't want to go to jail, stay out of trouble. It's that simple. How about that? But what I was told from people, you know, I, I have a tea sipper. She said she's always in jail. I said, well, fucking, I ain't mad at you. She told me flat out, I go in and out of jail. I've been in jail a few times, T. I fuck with you. She said, when you go to jail, the first thing they do is they give you a psychiatric evaluation. They put you in isolation. They got to make sure that you're not suicidal. And especially if you're high profile, because a lot of times she said for her, they don't even really do it as much because, you know, she's been in and out of there a few times. But especially if you're high profile and it's your first time, they're going to put you in that environment because they want to make sure you may say that you're fine. And I'm not suicidal because the camera's on you, Mr. Actor. But once you're in that lonely cell by yourself and all you have is your fucking thoughts, sometimes your thoughts can go dark. And you might think, you know what? I don't know what the hell's in the cell with you. Maybe, you know, I think they take your shoelaces and all that shit. But you start thinking crazy stuff. Now you can you can think crazy stuff and become suicide. The S word, sorry, I can't say it on YouTube, in your bedroom. You get what I'm saying? When you're lost in your thoughts. So they're going to put you under psychiatric evaluation and things like that. So they're talking as if this is being done to Jussie because, you know, all of a sudden now he's black. Now, the, the whole time he's been all oh, the, the little cute mixed boy on Empire. Now, you know, it's the black man. It's the black man. It's the black man. OK, you know, they're acting like this is all being done to him because he's black. This is done to every person who goes to jail, especially if you're high profile, especially if it's your first time there. Now, if you're a revolving door patient, OK, <laughs> inmate <laughs> like my tea sipper. They, they're like, well, you've been here. You, you come in here at least, you know, every six months. We're not going to give you no type of anything. Just go into general population. Go sit down. You know, so I just think it's really sad that they're using this. Uh, you know, it's I don't know if the, if the family's looking for attention, but I feel like they're they're acting like they're on a movie set right now. They're like in a TV show. When you really have people who are in prison, you really have black people who are locked up, you know what I'm saying, who have been given unfair sentencing for like marijuana charges and BS like that. How about you say free those black people? You have political prisoners right now who are still in jail. Why are you not hashtagging that? Y'all are acting like they sentenced this man to 25 years in Pelican Bay. He's literally in Cook County, which is a rough jail, I'm not gonna lie, but he'll be all right. He'll probably be in protective custody any damn way. I don't think they're even gonna have him in general population to be honest with you. The brother tried to come out and say that he's being threatened um, because he's gay and they're threatening him. They're sending him uh, gay slurs and they might harm him in jail. Stop with the dramatics. OK, what happens to regular people when they mess up and they go to jail? Guess what? They got to deal with the same threats to be anally ard. 
They got to deal with the same, you know, threats to be harmed in their sleep. So welcome to what a lot of regular people go through. Somebody said free Musa. Somebody said free. Um, who else we all trying to free? <laughs> the thing scrolled up. Yeah, there's a lot of people like, yeah, Mamuya uh, Abu. Yep, there's a lot of people who are in prison right now who did things for the movement, Black Panthers and stuff like that. Why y'all not shot and not free them? So me personally, no, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not freeing. I don't want uh, Juicy free. I think Juicy needs to sit in there for a while. And hopefully when he comes out, he'll be a better person. You know? Like, you, you can't blame the people. Oh, he's been punished. He's lost roles and he can't work in Hollywood. Well, so those are the consequences. Get a, get a regular job. Is that not, I mean, people go to jail all the time and go to prison. Nobody comes out of prison and they're like, now I can't get a job in Hollywood because I was in prison. They're going to tell you, sir, you're on probation. You have a week to find a job. I don't care if you have to fry fish. Nobody cares about what you did before you went to prison. Once you get out, you have to find, you know, gainful employment. Better go work at, work at Juf, Jiffy Lube. They hire felons. So I, I don't, I, I feel no ways about Juicy Smule. I just, I don't care. Because again, when I first came out and I called out his bullshit, I was attacked. I was called homophobic and all this nonsense. And I'm like, y'all don't see the holes in this story? It, the story makes no sense. And now he's been proven guilty. He's been sentenced and y'all are still crying for this guy. It just, it doesn't make any sense. I just hope that when he gets out, he'll do something, probably write a book, honey, you know, do something meaningful with himself. But all this crying and all this, you know, acting like there's not regular people every day going to prison, getting these same treatments. I just think that whole situation is sad. Yes. Somebody said free Brittany uh, Garner, the basketball uh, player. She's right now in a Russian prison because she got caught with a vape. Y'all not screaming free her. And she didn't lie on nobody. She literally got caught with a vape. Why are celebrities not rallying around her? She's in the WNBA. But y'all listen here crying for Juicy. It, it just makes no sense. I just, I don't like that. I don't like Emma Till's name being brought up in this. It's not okay. Because like I said, I, I would respect it if when it came out about Carolyn Bryant, Back in like what, 2015, 2016, if y'all all had the same energy back then, because y'all didn't. And I'm talking to the celebrities, not the regular people. So now I don't want to hear this whole comparison about Juicy and Carolyn Bryant. It's stupid because y'all didn't have this energy back then for Carolyn Bryant. But they do need to go arrest her and throw her ass in prison. And who who watched the, um, I was here for that, sh the, the movie, well, I guess it was like a, Five day special on ABC, the women of the movement. That was good. Speaking of that, I watched that while I was healing from surgery. The Emma Till story. The lady who played Mommy, uh, Mammy Mobley, she did an excellent job. She's a great actress. That was a very, 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 very good show. If y'all didn't watch it, a documentary, I should say. It was really good. Wonderful actors, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it was sad. It was, it was sad. It was very sad what happened to him. You know, so nobody's excusing it. It's haunting. I remember I went and I did some research because a lot of stuff has been scrubbed off the Internet about that family. Um, both the brothers are dead, but their descendants live on. So I was, you know, I was Googling and trying to research like, where, 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 where's their nephews and cousins and where were these people? That's how I know her ass is in South Carolina because I did a lot of research while I was out. And I ended up coming across the original article. They were paid $4,000. This was a year after the trial. And the things that they said about Emmett Till in that article was not only disgusting, it was full of lies. It was so, it was so full of lies. They were, they were trying to justify and almost act like this young boy was like superhuman. Like we had to, even when we were whooping him, he kept saying, hit me some more, hit me some more. It was really disturbing to read. Like I was crying reading it. Cause I'm like, these dudes are lying.
I don't know if y'all have ever like took time to Google it, the original article. It was it's so disturbing to read because they're lying. Because as a mother of a teenager, I know how kids act when they're in duress and they're going through something. And especially with strangers, two strange white men. And I know that my life is being held in their hands. And you want me to believe that the that the hits and the things that you were doing to him were making him stronger and, and was saying, you know, it doesn't hurt and hit me harder. And it was, it was fucked up. It was fucked up. So I, I don't like this comparison at all. I don't like this comparison at all because that baby suffered. So, so to even compare this shit, and I get they're not saying that, you know, Emmett's death is the same as what Jesse's going through, what they're comparing. I, I have common sense. What they're comparing is Carolyn Bryant and Jesse. That's what they're comparing. But I'm just talking about the overall case is too disturbing to even make this comparison. I think the comparison is insulting, especially because, you know, the, the, the mother of Emmett Till, she never had any children after that, I don't think. But it was because of what happened to Emmett Till is what sparked the civil rights movement. It was because of her strength and her showing and not allowing them to do a closed casket on her son is what sparked the civil rights movement, is what allowed a lot of us to be here as Black people, to be free somewhat, right, than we were back then. So I think what y'all should do, instead of talking my friend Jussie, use your celebrity power to go get that old bitch arrested and whoever else was involved. Because there's still a few people in that town that were involved with the killing of that baby. I'd respect it if Black Lives Matter went and knocked on her door. How about that, Patrice? Instead of going to go visit Jussie in, in jail in the psych ward, how about you go down and go visit Carolyn Bryant? Since y'all want to keep comparing Carolyn to Jesse, how about Black Lives Matter go march on her doorstep and demand that she be arrested? I'd respect that. I forget the fact that you took that money about all them fucking houses. How about that? So until they're doing that and standing outside her home in South Carolina and demanding her arrest, I don't want to hear about anything about Carolyn Bryant and Jesse. Jesse will be fine. He'll be on about three months. Moving on. That case really bothers me. So I don't like comparisons at all. If y'all really read what those dudes wrote about that boy in that, in that article, it was just disgusting. Just lies. Lies. About a 14-year-old. I remember a long time ago, though, I want to say Ed Bradley... I was watching a bunch of old clips from like the 80s, 90s and shit um, about Emmett Till. And I believe it was Ed Bradley. He went to her house and the son tried to snap on Ed Bradley. You know what I mean? Like, get off our lawn. I want to beat the son ass too and the mama. But yeah, Ed Bradley, like they, they, her, she's still there at the same house. That's what I'm saying. Like all this energy on the internet, go to her home. Ed Bradley went a few years ago and confronted her ass. Yes, it's a mess. I, yeah, I've been out here for a while, an hour and 37 minutes. I'm sorry if I went on a tangent, but y'all know how I feel about Emmett Till. I remember I ended up getting like death threats when I called out Lil Wayne for that line, beat the P up like Emmett Till, and Lil Wayne fans sent me death threats. This man literally stalked me on my Facebook page for a whole month. I had to go to the police. Just stupid ass Lil Wayne fans. Talking about it's just a line, F you. And it's like, no, it's not just a line. You don't understand what that baby went through. Child. What are all these unicorns doing in my chat? What, what is it now, Barb's? All I see is unicorns. What, what happened? Hey, Barb's. Even though y'all claim I don't like me, but y'all be here, honey. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, Edmundo sent $20. He says, Hey T, I've been watching you for a good three to four years. Living for your realness. Keep slaying the house down with these hairstyles. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming through love. Uh, Lana Boo sent 10 says it's just jail, not sandals resort. 
Jesse better be glad he's not in Baltimore City Jail. <laughs> Love your work, T. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of rough jails out here. That's why I said, if you don't want to go to jail, do the right thing, shit. I know I'm not built from nobody's fucking jail, so I do the right thing. Follow the traffic laws and do what you got to do. And I'm not saying you can't get into situations that are beyond your control, but, you know, just try your best. If you're not built for that, stay out of jail. Um, let's see here. Uh, Fabiola sent 699 says, hey, T, just want to let you know you're inspiring as a fellow sickler who's 23. Seeing how far you've come encourages me not to give up love from Canada. Thank you so much. And thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, Queen C sent five. Hey, Queen. She says, hey, T, I'm glad you finished the deep dive, even though you said I was distracting you from the discord. I was just stopping by to send some love. Um, love you, sis. Thank you so much. Yes, like I was trying to take little breaks on Sunday because I started editing at like eight o'clock in the morning. Like literally, it, this is like a 16 hour job. I didn't get done until 4 a.m. And by then I'm like falling asleep. And then I'm trying to do stuff with the Discord. I'm trying to, you know, post announcements, let people in. And then the ladies were handling the emails. And then I'm trying to welcome like the new members, you know, so y'all like I was taking a small break when I was in there chatting with y'all on Discord. So that was fun. I was just laughing. But I was getting so tired by like one o'clock in the morning once I'm like getting and then like it crashed twice. So I had to like render it twice. So I'm like playing like new kids on the block, like super loud, like trying to keep myself up as this rendering. And so I you hear like one o'clock in the morning is oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 the right stuff. I know my kids was like, what the hell is she down there doing? I was banging new kids on the block at one o'clock in the morning trying to stay. <laughs> hey, in tough. I'm telling you, when you're an editor, you will do anything to stay up. I'm eating ice. I'm listening to new kids and shit. I'm doing a little dance. <laughs> so no, so thank you for the memes and stuff you were posting in the Discord because they had me cracking up. Cause I'm like, oh my God. And I was only like maybe 40 minutes in and I had so much stuff to like do. And I just had folders and folders of stuff. And so, yeah, y'all made my day when I was just taking that break. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm telling you once four o'clock hit and everything was uploaded. I was like, oh, I'm done. And then I remember my nephew was coming over at seven o'clock in the morning. I had to watch him cause he was off for school for the day. So I literally slept for like an hour or two, then the doorbell rang, I let my nephew in and I couldn't go back to sleep after that. So I like literally stayed up like a whole 24 hours. So I got some sleep last night. So yeah, the editing process is crazy. Yes, I'm a, I'm a new kids on the block fan. I love them, I love new edition. You know what I mean? That That's like my childhood. I was surprised I still have all the songs memorized. I was like, why do I know these words? Please don't go girl. <laughs> That is my song. That is my song. Um, let's see here. Um, Sav says, my aluminum hat is ting tingling and making me think this was a distraction from something else. Love you. Love you too. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, and the fact that they're still carrying on about this Jesse situation, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, Colin says, Taraji is still getting paid. The crew of Empire is not. Jesse cost them their jobs for this fuckery, but Taraji isn't mentioning that. Boom, that part. Thank you so much. Thank you, Colin, for bringing that up. Right, you're crying about him. The show got canceled because of his antics. And that's, again, like we've been talking all this time, it's the people behind the scenes who get affected by stuff like this. You know, we're watching the show and you're seeing like the celebrities, you're seeing, you know, Juicy, and you're seeing, you know, Taraji and, the child, the other guy, Hakeem, the one that played Hakeem, I forgot his real name. Yes, we're seeing all of them, but we're not understanding. There's the lighting technician, the DP, the stylist, the makeup artist, the hairstylist. You know, there's so many people behind the scenes that make the shows run. Background actors and actresses, all that stuff. The grip, the graphers, the lighting techs. All these people lost their job because of Juicy. So no, I will not cry for Juicy Smoulet laying on a psychiatric cot. I don't care. But I will cry for the cast and crew who lost their job because of his attention seeking. I'll save my tears for them. Somebody says JR is spamming. 
T talk about Benzino. I don't know what happened to Benzino. Somebody said that he got caught coming out of a the Red Roof Inn. That's the only thing I heard. I don't know, like, what did he get caught doing? Like, was he with a, a man or something? What happened? Somebody was asking me about that. Like, did you hear about Benzino at the Red Roof Inn? But I don't know what he did. Somebody said Jesse got stars canceled too. Yeah, because it kind of affected um, Lee Daniels. Because remember, Lee Daniels really put his neck out there for Jesse. Remember, he was crying and shit. Jesse, he's my son. Notice Lee Daniels ain't said shit. <laughs> he ain't said nothing about this. And then, and that's another thing. Y'all keep crying to us on the internet. Ain't shit we can do. I'm not hashtagging nothing. How about y'all hashtag where's Kamala Harris and Cory Booker? How about you tell them to free Jesse? Being that he probably did this shit for them any damn way. They've been really quiet. Want to harass regular folks. Harass, harass Kamala and them and ask them why they're not helping their friend. Because remember, she came out, she was one of the first ones to tweet, her and Corey, when they were trying to get the little lynching bill, the lynching bill passed. And they were using that Jesse case. Isn't it interesting? Remember, y'all go back and watch my Jesse video, so I broke all this down. Isn't it interesting that the same time Kamala and Corey were trying to get the lynching bill passed, all of a sudden, Jesse has a, a, a rope around his neck that looked like damn dental floss. Isn't it interesting that they chose to do that? You home? Okay. Yes. You know, I'm like live, but yeah. Come say hi to my audience. Come say hi. Don't be shy. Uh, <laughs> That's my son, y'all. <laughs> what happened? Can I go to the South again? Did, like, and who's, when did y'all clean up downstairs? That was all total shock. Because I take a video of that hole in the wall. All right. So, no, I'm live. We're not, we're not going to talk about all that right now. What time is the game? You driving up there? Okay. All right. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a mom, so so you know when it you know when they see I'm working and he has to go somewhere, so he's like, I gotta, I gotta interrupt. But um, oh God, he's cute. He's handsome. What's up with your son? He's 16, y'all. Calm down. <laughs> Yeah, I mess. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, damn, I forgot what I thought. I was talking about Cory Booker and Kamala Harris. You know, threw my, th my train of thought off. But um, they were trying to pass the, the anti-lynching bill. And so I just found it very coincidental that not only was Jesse attacked, but he, you know, they, they also threw a, a, a noose on his neck as if this is like 1954 in rural Mississippi. So just, you know, on a cold Chicago night, somebody had rope in their pocket and they threw it on your neck. Like, Jesse, just shut the fuck up with this story. I'm so over this story. I'm over Juicy. This has been just a three-year debacle, okay? So I feel no ways. Um, let's see. I'm going to read a few more Super Chats here. I've not been on for almost two hours. Um... Melanin Queen, hey sis, she says, Jesse can always get a job at Subway. <laughs> he was liking being out in the late evenings, so he shouldn't mind an overnight shift. Fresh, eat fresh. You're such a man. <laughs> That's the truth. So maybe Subway will hire him, honey. Since he was going out his way to go get a Subway and, and you know, during a polar vortex. Subway is never that important, okay? Um, let's see. Bianca says, tell him, T, tell him. Thank you so much, Bianca. Thanks for the super chat. Dora Washington sent five, says, good evening from Georgia. Just wanted to support your channel. Thank you for the content. Thank you so much, Dora. Appreciate you. Um, Mushu, I like that. Mushu Willow sent 10, says, that heifer says she lied about Emmett and no charges were pressed. A teenager was killed based off of the word of a white woman, the way he was mutilated, and the lack of remorse for his killers. Exactly. And that's why I feel like when it came out that she lied, that's when all of these celebrities should have came together and, you know, wrecked shop until something was done. Because we really don't have a whole bunch of power. They're the ones who got connections to Cory Booker and Kamala. Where is Jesse? You know what I'm saying? Since he wants to get into the political game and, you know, do all this stuff for his political friends. Maybe back then when the story came out, him, Taraji, and the whole cast of Empire should have sat at her door and made sure that she was arrested and, and you know, shine more light to it. I'm just saying. 
because the whole situation was very, very disturbing. But thank you for the super chat. Um, AG said 99. She says, wake it up, T. You look beautiful today. The judge was honest and fair. Jesse shouldn't have gotten, should have gotten one year in jail, but he got a slap on the wrist. I hope he learns from this. Yeah. And I think that's what it is, too, is that they're salty that the judge, if y'all go back and watch that case, the judge was reading Jesse for the filth. He really was. He caught him on his shit, caught him all types of narcissist. He, he did. And the thing is, I believe that Jesse's ego and his family's ego couldn't take it. Because, you know, when you're a celebrity, you're not used to somebody talking to you or talking down to you or, or telling you about yourself because you're around a bunch of yes men. And to me, his family is nothing but a bunch of yes men. If y'all really cared about him, you would hold your brother accountable. You know what I'm saying? Instead of making excuses. So I think the whole situation is crazy. Uh, let's see here. Haitian Queen Mimi says, in reference to Carolyn, how long does karma take? Shake my head. I don't know, but I know when I went back and I went to go listen to some of Mammy uh, Till's, um, um, Mammy Mobley, her old speeches, the one that she gave before she died a few years ago, she was saying that karma did hit that family. Um, both the brothers, a few years after Emma Till's death, <clears throat> they both lost their oldest sons. So both of their sons died. A lot of people don't know that. And both of the women, Carolyn Bryant included, they left the brothers as well because they were like a huge family. The Bryants were like a huge family in that town. They had a lot of siblings. They were A lot of them were like half siblings because their daddy had a bunch of kids. But yeah, they got their karma. Their, their children died as well. Mammy even stated that before she passed. So... You know, and I don't know if that was one of the kids with Carolyn. I'm not sure. But even that, they lost their store. Um, they had to go on welfare. I know one of the Bryant brothers ended up in prison at one point in time for like scamming welfare benefits. And then they both died of like painful, painful cancer, both of the brothers. So, yeah. But as far as Carolyn, you know, she's had to change her name and hide her identity and all that stuff. So I don't really know what all has hit in her. But I know for the men, they definitely got a lot of karma as the years went on. You know, you can't do something that wicked and evil and think that, you know, there will be no retribution by God. Period. So, yeah, I felt no ways when I heard that. Because I'm sure even though their kids died in that sad, you know, death of a child, I'm sure their kids probably died in a lot more humane way than Emmett Till. So um, let's see here. Uh, Legal 6 love says, I wanted to support and I wanted to know when the Discord will be open again. Um, we just opened it yesterday, so it probably won't be open again until, until April or May around that time. Um, let's see here. In the mix with Leah B podcast says, do you remember the Nick, the new kids on the block cartoon? Yes. I watched that on Saturday mornings. Remember the MC Hammer cartoon? Yeah, I was not ready for that. Remember the kid and play cartoon? Yes. I watched that as well. Yeah. Remember uh, Bo Jackson? Bo knows. He had a cartoon. Yep. I used to watch all them cartoons back in the day. But yeah, the new kids on the block cartoon, that was the shit. I loved it. I loved it. So thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Purple Rain sent 10. Hey, sis. She says, hey, T, uh, coming through to tell that that hair is everything. You look beautiful, um, like a beautiful chocolate strawberry today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Y'all have been wonderful, you guys. We've been on here going on two hours. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to log off. But thank you guys once again for coming to this stream. I hope you guys learned a lot. And again, if you haven't seen the documentary, definitely check it out. It's on Patreon, YouTube membership, and Discord for those who have access. Um, it's good. All the documentaries are on there, actually. So the Playboy one and all the other ones I've been working on the past few months, the Omicron. Um, there's been a few documentaries I've done. So you guys will have access to those. But thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for just the positive messages. I'm so glad y'all did like the static, the static documentary. Um, I'm glad I'm able to kind of tell Mace's story, you know, and, and just show people where he's coming from with this. 
and not just dismiss what he's saying because there's auto tune breakfast club. Um, <laughs> and just thank you guys once again for just coming to the show. I really appreciate it. So you guys have a good evening. Um, I'll be back again. Remember tomorrow's the green room. The green room is free for everybody to come. It's not just discord. So we'll be talking about static major tomorrow around six o'clock on the green room. So I'll see you guys then have a good day. Bye.